Alright, starting with those jumping jacks, let's warm up the lower body. So we're going to alternate between lower body and abs throughout this whole workout. Circuits of each, and so we'll just make sure that we sort of get that burn on before we switch from one to the other. And for now, just taking it slow with these jumping jacks, making sure that everything's feeling awake and ready to rock and roll. Light on the toes here, just getting a sense of how the body feels, letting those muscles move a little bit as you draw your energy and your attention into the workout. Arms all the way up. Keep it going. So we're not doing a ton of cardio through today. So we are going to work a little bit to get the heart rate up during this warm up. Let's go five, four, three, two, and one. All right, switch it right into those butt kicks. Keeping those toes moving and get those heels nice and high right up to the butt. And again, we're looking to get that heart rate climbing a little bit, muscles totally warmed up, so that when we dive in to weighted legs, we're feeling good, and like we're just ready to push into it. Heels getting all the way up there, four, three, two, and one, slow things down into those high kicks. Cross body, toes get nice and high here. Nice straight legs if you can. Yeah. And as your legs start to loosen up and you'll feel it, you'll get those toes up a little bit higher, a little bit higher, stretching through the glutes and the hamstrings. Shoulders stay down and back. Just keeping that pace up. Let's go three, two, one more each side. All right, knees to chest. Give me two each side, just the knee to the chest. Figure out where your center of gravity is, which is clearly not something I have right now. And then you can add the open in. Once you're feeling good about that. So knee to chest, big hug, open and drop. Take it nice and slow. Be super purposeful about this hip opener. Boom, open, and drop. Keeping those shoulders down and back. Starting to focus on form, even though it's just the warm up. Making sure it's always your fallback, good form. Let's go one more each side here. Starting to feel those legs wake up a little bit. Down, open and down. All right, shake it out, shake those boots out. Nice wide stance, and breeze through a little bit of an upper body pull here, left to right. Stretching through the fingertips. Nice straight back with this one. Shoulders and hips facing forward. Really what you're looking for is that pull, starting at the hip and moving all the way through the fingertips of the opposite side. So you're gonna take it nice and slow as you get deeper into that pull. Let's go one more each side, and then we're going to turn this side-to-side -side pull into that up and down pull, so those body weight windmills, essentially. So when you come back to the top this time, you're going to reach the left hand up to the ceiling, and this time you're going to do that pull down towards the ankle, push up towards the ceiling, and opposite side. We're going to wake up that spine, wake up the lower back, Let's make sure everything's working together. Boom. And up. we're going to dive right in to some heavy lifting with this leg day. So we want to make sure body's ready to go. Let's go one more each side. Awesome. Push straight up through the ceiling. And then last one. Yep. Excellent. All right. From there, we're taking that reach into a toe touch. So coming forward, cross body reach. So all of these stretches, these last three stretches, moving that spine, waking things up, and just getting a sense of what muscles feel good this morning, what muscles might need a little extra work as we sort of talk through those first two circuits. 
soft bend in the knees here, but you want to push the butt back so you're getting that stretch all the way up the back side of the leg to the glutes and into the lower back. Let's do one more each side. Reach. Last one. All right, stand up nice and tall. We're gonna stretch that spine up towards the ceiling first. So big, deep breath in, long spine. Push your butt back behind you. Keep that length and reach for the floor. All right, you can adjust your feet position to get that stretch going on, but you wanna start with those gentle side to side bends. You don't have to get too deep into this stretch, but you just wanna feel the pull of the inside of the leg. And again, take it nice and slow here, just waking the body up, not looking to put too much pressure on muscles quite yet. Go ahead and push your hips back just a little bit here, change the angle of that stretch. Still side to side motions here, nice and gentle. And then you can work those hips forward again. Get a little bit deeper into that side-to-side -side bend for these last couple. Let's go three, two, and one. And then you're going to straighten both legs and walk those heels in towards the center, followed by the toes, heels and toes until your hands are behind, excuse me, your toes are behind your hands, and roll those shoulders right up towards the ceiling. Shake everything out. If anything felt tight and you want to continue to stretch that out, go for it. So you're going to want a mat for our core round. You're going to want a set of dumbbells for our leg circuits. And we're going to flip-flop one to the other. Um, legs is a no-repeat style workout. Core, we're going to see twice. So every exercise that you see in the core circuit, we're going to hit that one again um, at the end of the workout. So legs, abs, legs, abs. And like I said, we're going to dive into this leg workout with weights right from the get-go. We're going to start with a sumo squat. So we want two weights in hand. You're going to have a nice wide stance. Dumbbell straight down. You're going to go into that wide stance squat and right back up, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to move through a series of exercises, kind of playing with them a little bit. So you're going to get that burn on, but we're going to take some short rests in between so that we can shake the legs out. And believe me, those legs will be necessary by the end. So those rests, excuse me, that we have. So two dumbbells in hand. We're going to get started with the sumo squat. Your arms are straight down. Nice wide stance here. Two and one. You're just going to lower the butt and then push right back up to the top. Use this first round just to perfect your form, right? Go ahead and look down. Check your form. Your knees should be tracking over the toes. Butt pushing back behind you. Your torso can come forward a little bit, but you don't want too much of a lean there. And if you feel like you're leaning, too far forward, just don't go quite as deep into that squat. That'll fix that problem a little bit until things start to loosen up and you increase that mobility a little bit. We have about five seconds here. Four, three, two, and one. All right, shake it out. So these first couple of breaths, you're going to think, all right, I don't really need that quite yet, but we're going to need them by the end of it. So we're going to go back into the sumo squat. This time, you're going to add a pulse at the bottom. So that nice wide stance again, you've locked in your form, arms straight down in front, two, and once you're going to go down, pulse, and then stand up nice and tall. So you're just going to do two count pulse at the bottom, and then push through the heels right back up to the top. Make sure you're keeping those toes on the ground. So as you push through the heels to return to a standing position, toes stay down, nice even surface, connecting your feet to the mat. Pulse and push. Yeah. Down and up. And if at any time you feel like you want to drop to one weight or no weight, you can do that as well. Shoulders stay down and back. Let's go four, three, one more rep, two, and one. Up to the top and again, shake things out. So we have one more exercise in that sumo squat variation. This time we're going to go down, calf raise, heels hit the ground, and then push. Back up. So, nice wide stance. 
We're gonna go down into that sumo squat first, and then we'll do the calf raise. Here we go. So we're down, heels up, hip down, and push back up to the top. So that heel raise, down, and up. And what you're doing is you're adding time under tension, you're adding instability, and you're hitting those calves a little bit as well. Heels up, down, and push. So these rounds are pretty long before we get to an actual rest period. Heels up, down, and press. Yeah, beautiful. 10 seconds to go. Thrown in a little bit of instability. Everything looks awesome. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. I want you to drop one dumbbell. Goes over to the side. So we're going to go into a lunge series here. We're going to go side lunges. I want that weight in your left hand. We're going to side lunge to the right. And you're going to sort of aim that dumbbell towards the right foot. So down and up. Down exactly. And then push through the heel. So a bit of a touchdown. The weight is in the opposite hand that you're stepping out into that lunge for. So if we're stepping to the right, the weight's in the left hand. Touch down and right back up to the top. You're gonna have to get quite low into that side lunge, which means you're gonna have to push harder through the heel to get back up to the top. Push, yeah, there you go. Starting to feel that glute and the quad. 10 seconds on this side. Keep the body moving. Five, four, three, two, and one. Shake it out. All right. Over to the left side, balance things out. We'll see that right side again now. So this time the weight starts in your right hand. We're going to step it out to the left, touch down with that right hand. We have about five seconds here. Four, three, deep breath in, two, and one. We go. Step it out, touch it down, and push back up to the top. These are the exercises that bring you back to that warm up, right? Warming up the hips and the inside and posterior chain muscles in the legs. Touch down and up. Stick with it. So big push from that left foot right now. You're pushing hard through the heel, through the toes, flat foot back to the center. Down and up. We've got five, four, three, two, and one, back to the top. All right, shake those legs out. We're gonna go back to the right side. This time, you're gonna pulse at the bottom. So you're gonna step out, pulse, so sort of mini push, and then back up to the top, all right? To the right side. Weights in the left hand, three, two, and one. So step it out to the lunge, mini push, and then you're gonna go back to the center. So a little pulse at the bottom. So it's sort of a fake out push there, which really means that you have to stay in control. You have to know which muscles are working and stay connected. Good way to feel that quad and the glutes. Yep. Step it out. Push the butt back behind you. It's gonna help you get deep into that side lunge. Yeah, nice. Stick with it, five. Four, three, two, and one. Up to the top. See, I told you we would want these longer rest periods at some point. So we're going to switch sides here. Again, when you go into that lunge, you're getting deep. The butt pushes back behind you. Knee stays over that toe, okay? So we're going to go to the left side. Weights in your right hand. Three, two, and one. Here we go. Boom. Pulse. And up to the top. Yeah. Pulse. Exactly. Awesome. So that, that knee stays over the toe. If you were to drag your right foot towards the left at this point, you'd just be in a squat. That's the form you want to be in. Step it out. Long leg circuits, I told you. Woo! Come on. Up. We have 10 seconds to go. A couple more leg exercises before we dive into abs. Five. Four, three, two, and one. All right. You're going to hold on to that single dumbbell, but you're going to hold on to either end this time. Nice wide stance again. We're going to take 
that sumo stance and turn it into a deadlift. So this time, keep the back nice and straight. Think about pushing your hips back behind you, okay? So you're gonna go in for that dead and right back up. And you might find that you cannot get quite as low into this deadlift as you can when your feet are right next to each other. And that is just fine. All we're looking for is that pull through the hamstrings, squeeze the glutes, and draw your hips forward again. This is all about that hip hinge. Down, and then pull right back up to the top. Hit those hamstrings. Yep, awesome. Nice straight arms, dumbbell approaches the mat. Four, three, let's get one more rep in. Up to the top and shake it out. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do that again, but this time, before coming all the way back up to the top, you're gonna go down into the dead, halfway up, pause, and then all the way up, all right? So pause, dead lift. So again, wide stance, arms straight down in front, dumbbells go straight down towards the floor. Come a couple inches up, pause, and then all the way up. And you're gonna feel how much work it actually takes to pause that deadlift, right? You start to feel those hamstrings and the glutes shake a little bit on the pause. We're messing with the natural flow of things and asking those legs to do just a little bit more. Right up to the top. Yeah. Nice. Yup. I'm not pausing, pull right up. Woo! Here we go. One more rep. Four, three, two, and one. There it is. All right. Dumbbell to the mat. You make, want to make sure you do have a mat on the floor because we're going to switch gears into ab mode right now. Let's see. Yeah. All right. Shake things out. Take a second to have some water. You can leave your dumbbells to the side, and then let's hit the mat for a little bit of core. So, we are going to move through a series of five ab exercises, short break in between just to take some deep breaths, stretch the abs if you need it. We're going to start with a really simple basic crunch, hands behind the head, just engaging the core and pulling the shoulders up off the mat. So, onto the mat. All the way down, and again, just a simple basic crunch, nothing fancy here, hands just behind the head. You're gonna engage the core and just lift those shoulder blades right up off the mat. You're not even going all the way up. Boom, and right back down. Keeping that lower back nice and tight to the mat. And just kind of getting a sense of where the core muscles are coming into play and controlling the work. 10 seconds to go. We're gonna hit upper, lower, and obliques. Four, three, two, and one. All right, that left ankle comes up, crosses across the knee. You're gonna aim the right elbow for the left knee. So cross body crunch, up and down. But again, keep it simple. You're just looking to get the shoulder blade up off the mat. Your elbow doesn't have to touch the knee. We're just looking for a little bit of that twist to get the obliques firing. Up, cross body, and back down. Ten seconds to go. And down. These are short little abs spurts, but they're going to burn. Three, two, and one. Left foot to the mat. Right ankle comes up and crosses over that left leg. Left elbow to the right. Here we go. Up and crunch. And back down towards the mat. So we're hitting that left side now. All the way up. And all the way back down. We're going to keep these movements nice and controlled. Nice and slow. And just feel each rep where we're supposed to feel it. We've got 10 seconds to go. Up. And right back down to the mat. Here we go. Three. Two. And one. All right, hands by your side. We are gonna do a kick out here. So all you're gonna do, you're gonna start with the legs up at 90 degrees. You're gonna lower those heels to the floor and just kick them out right in front of you and then right back up. I don't know why that sound is so aggressive. We're just gonna ignore the timer and right back up. So 90 degrees, those knees right above the hips. 
Yeah, there you go. Slide the heels as close to the floor as you can get it. Ignore this time. We've got another 10 seconds to go. Right back up to the top. Woo! Come on, stick with it. Three, two, and one. All right, 10 second break. Final ab exercise of this circuit. We're going to go into bicycles. So these are going to be low, long bicycles. Fingertips behind your head again. Your feet are going to start back up, or excuse me, your legs back up in that 90 degree. Here we go. Oh, bicycle tension. One and two. Back and forth. Again, you're going to ignore that timer. Don't go out in there. Back and forth. Nice and slow. We've got 20 seconds to go here. All the way through it. Let those abs get a little fiery right now. Cross body. 10 seconds. You got this. Come on. All the way through it. We'll take a little bit of a break in five, four, three, two, and one. Knees to the chest. Take a deep breath in. And then go ahead and rock and roll up on your sit bones. We're back into leg mode. So we have a couple of seconds here. This thing just likes to yell at us today. I don't know what the deal is. All right. Stretch anything out, whether the legs, the abs are feeling a little tight, like they need a little love. Woo! Two and a half minutes of abs, and that hits just great. So, we're back up on our feet for the first one, two, three, four, five, six exercises of this leg round. And then we're actually going to hit the mat for the last two exercises. We'll see those same core, the same ab work again, and then that's it, right? So, here we go. We're going to start with the reverse lunge. You're going to start with the right leg in front, step it back and up, back and up, and then over to the side. Weight is optional on this one. You can use the weights if you want to, or you can go body weight, or you can switch it up halfway in between, all right? So if you're using weight, you're gonna want two dumbbells. Keep it nice and even, arms straight down to your sides, okay? Here we go. So again, that right leg is gonna be the stance leg to start us off here. Just a simple reverse lunge, nothing fancy. Step it back and pull the body forward. Wake up those legs again. Yeah, excellent. Big step back. That left knee approaches the mat. Nice and smooth, nice and in control. Boom, and back. So make sure you're stepping directly back behind you. We're gonna get into that curtsy lunge, but we're not there yet. Boom, and you're pulling up by pushing through the front foot. Keep it nice and even, moderate pace. Step it back, pull it forward. Four, three, two, and one. All right, shake it out. We're gonna stick to that right side. So here's where those longer rest periods come into play, right? We're gonna turn that reverse lunge into a curtsy lunge. So step back and behind that right leg. Again, weight's optional. You can do this with dumbbells. You can do it a goblet squat, squat style or body weight. Here we go. Step it back and pull it forward. Same smooth movement, same control, and same pull through that front leg, right? You want to kind of push through the heel before you start pulling yourself forward so you start to feel the muscles engage before you even start to stand up tall. Bump and up. Nice. Step it back. Beautiful. Whew. All right, here we go. Ten seconds. Stick with it. That glute's firing. Four, three, two, and one. Shake it out. All right, so of course we have to balance things out, right? We're going to go over to the left side. We'll do reverse lunges, and then we'll do those curtsy lunges. We have a couple of seconds here. So we're going to shake everything out. Take a deep breath in. Plant that left foot. Three, two, and one. Step it straight back and pull it forward. You want to make sure you're taking a big enough step that your front leg is hitting about 90 degrees, right? So if you take a smaller step than that, you absolutely can, but it might make you feel like you don't have quite as much control in back and balance. Excuse me. 
If you're stepping back and hitting those 90 degree angles, that's where your body's gonna have the most stability through these lunges. 10 seconds to go. Step it back, pull it forward, slow and steady, wins the race. Three, two, one. Pull it forward and shake it out. All right, we're gonna turn that reverse lunge into a curtsy lunge. I want you to shake the legs out for a second here. So you're going to step that right leg back and behind the left foot in three, in two, and one. Let's go. Step it back and pull. Yeah. Same deal, right? You want to find the angles that give, you, give your body the most stable ground to work with. And that typically is that 90 degree angle. Big step back, pulling hard through that front foot. Again, you want to push through the heel, push through the toes so you feel those muscles engage to draw you forward. Pull up. Woo -hoo. Five, four, three, two, and one. Nicely done. One weight to the side. We're going to go into some B stand squats here, or excuse me, B stand deadlifts. So, what you're going to do. We're going to start with that right leg as the stance leg. Again, the left knee bends. I'm wearing black pants, so it's hard to see, but my toe is on the mat behind me. And you're going to go in, deadlift towards that right foot, and pull right back up. So again, right leg stays straight, left leg bends, and the knees stay together, but that toe stays on the mat to give you a little bit of balance. And again, just like those sumo beds, you might not be able to get as deep into this hip hinge as you're used to getting. And that's just fine. The key to this deadlift is to keep your hips nice and even. Don't let that left hip open to the side. Everything faces forward. Five, four, three, two, and once then it's nice and tall and shake it out. Does that make sense? As you go in, right, to get lower into it, you kind of want to open into it. Keep the hips facing directly forward. So that left leg is going to be the stance leg this time. Go ahead and bend the right leg. Toes back behind you for support. Three, two, and one. Let's go. Reach and pull up nice and tall. Last exercise on our feet. When this timer goes off, you're going to keep that dumbbell in hand. We're going to head down to the mat. Reach and pull up nice and tall. Stick with it. You're going to feel the hamstring. You're going to feel the glute engage. Boom. And pull up nice and tall. And again, that right toe is just giving you a little bit of support. Just a throw in a little bit of a challenge into the game. Four, three, two, and one. Woo! All right, shake it off. Like I said, bring that weight with you down to the mat. We're going to go into glute bridge mode. We're going to go weighted glute bridges. Dumbbells on your hips. Back starts flat on the ground. All you're going to do is squeeze the glutes, push the hips up towards the ceiling, and right back down. We will transition right from glutes into abs at this point. We'll get a little break in between so you can stretch the glutes out. So, tension the whole time here. Legs are strong. Glutes are one of the biggest muscle groups in the body, so they've got a lot of power to give. we got to use it up. we got just over 10 seconds. Up. Down to the mat. Four, three, two, and one. All right, we have one leg exercise to go. We're gonna go up into that blue bridge, hold, and then butterfly. So push the knees out to the side and bring them to the center. You can do this weighted, or you can do it body weight. This is the last leg exercise, so definitely say challenge yourself with that weight. Here we go. Push the hips up towards the ceiling. So, knees butterfly out to the side, right back to the center. Butterfly, and in. You're keeping the glutes nice and high throughout the whole work interval, and your back stays nice and straight, right? So, if you're feeling like you've got a little bit of an arch there, 
Try to tuck that tail a little bit. To straighten out the back and keep the work on the glutes. Dial in that focus. We've got 10 seconds to go. Make sure you're breathing. Five, four, three, two. And we're hips down to the mat. Go ahead and pull those knees into the chest. You're just going to stretch it out. Like I said, we're going to go right into our ab exercises from from the from the ground. So again, we're going to repeat those same exercises. You know what's coming. You know that slow burn is going to hit, right? So a couple more seconds. Knees to the chest, stretching things out. All right, knees down to the mat. We're going to start with that basic punch. So your fingertips are going to be lightly behind your head. They're not pulling your neck. They're not doing any work. They're just keeping the elbows nice and wide. So basic crunch in three, two, and one. Let's go. Engage the abs and just draw those shoulders up off the mat and then right back down. Slow and steady here. You know that part is coming on. So we've got a few minutes of abs to go before this workout is complete. Right up and right back down. Ten seconds. Keep the body moving. Keep your mind on the work at hand. Three, two, and one. All right, nicely done. Right ankle up over that left knee. And you're going to angle left elbow forward. The right knee. Here we go. Hit those obliques. Up, over, and down. Get that twist in. And down to the mat. Woo! All right. And again, you want to keep your mind focused on the muscles that are doing the work here. So you start to feel those obliques. Stick with it. Those fingertips aren't pulling. They're just resting behind your head. There shouldn't be any tension in the mat. Four. Three, two, and one. Down to the mat. Go ahead and switch. So your left ankle is up over the right knee. If you're feeling tension in the neck, what I want you to do is really sort of dial that focus into the abs. Here we go. Up and across and down. So instead of starting the work at your neck, you want to start it at your belly button. Up and down. Cross body all the way through it. We're getting closer and closer. That right shoulder blade comes just up off the mat. We've got five, four, three, two, and one. All right, hands by your side. Legs up, knees bent at 90 degrees. We're going to kick it out in three, two, and one. Heels to the mat, kick it out. And back to the center. Lower back is staying locked in to the mat. Nice and gentle. Whatever pace helps you feel like you are most in control. Kick them up. Bring them in. Woo! Almost there. Stick with it. Five. Four. Three, two, one. All right, here we go. One exercise left. We've got bicycle crunches. So knees back up, fingertips behind the head. Here we go. Right to left. This is it. You can keep those shoulder blades just up off the mat. We're in pure work mode for the next 15 seconds. Get all the way through it. Come on, last exercise. Last push and burn right now. 10 seconds. All the way through. Come on. Five, four, three, two, and one. Go ahead and relax. Draw those knees back into the chest. Hug them in nice and tight. Nice workout. Go ahead and rock and roll across the lower back, across the mid back. Taking some deep breaths in here. All right, let your body come back to the center. You're going to keep that right leg right where it is, tucked into the chest, 
Go ahead and stretch the left leg out in front of you. Nice and straight, down to the mat. And then just hugging that right knee into the chest. What you're focusing on right now is those deep breaths in, long, slow exhales. I want you to let that right knee fall down towards the mat to the right side of the body. So open up those hips. Already forgetting about that ab burn. A little bit of pressure can be applied to that right knee to sort of open up the hips a little bit more. Bring that leg back up to the center. And then all the way over the body to the left side. So we're going to hit the glute stretch out a little bit. You can change the angle of the knee bend. Find a stretch position here that feels comfortable for you. Back to the center. One last hug into the chest. And then go ahead and straighten that right leg out and bring the left leg in towards your center. Hug it in nice and tight here. Pushing the hips, the top of the hips into the mat, drawing your lower back in towards the mat as well. When you're ready, go ahead and let that left leg fall to the left side, open up those hips. And again, if you want to apply a little extra pressure to the left leg, you can, or just let the natural body weight get that stretch going. Bye, ladies. Thank you. Back up to the center. And then all the way over to the right side. And again, you can sort of flip the angle of that left leg to get the right position for the stretch for you. You'll feel the stretch through the lower back as well. Back to the center, and another squeeze in towards the chest, and then straighten that left leg out again, and you're going to roll up onto your sit bones. Let's just hit the neck real quick after all of that ab work, we tend to sort of get a little tension there, so just whatever position is comfortable for you, take a deep breath in, and then just let your chin fall towards your chest, breathing out any tension. Then you're just going to roll the right ear towards your right shoulder, back to the center, and over to the left. Loosen things up a little bit, and then you can get into those full neck rolls. So once you feel comfortable with that, three or four, in a counterclockwise direction, nice and slow. And then when you're ready, three or four in the opposite direction. Loosening up any muscles, tension in the jaw. Once your chin comes back to the chest, gently lift the chin, roll those shoulders out a little bit again. Just loosening up everything, any tension that you're sort of feeling in the neck or the shoulders from that ab work. You guys kick some lower body butt today. Nice.